Hi everyone! For this video we're going to do a simple caged wire wrap with an emphasis on doing this wrapped bale technique. We are going to use a simple pyrite stone but you can use whatever stone you have. Um, it's best to use a stone with an irregular shape with some jagged edges to anchor the simple caged wire wrap technique around. So we're going to need our stone, pliers, flush cutters, a paintbrush or something similar, 20 gauge square copper wire, and 21 gauge half round copper wire. And we also have our little buddy joining us. Optional though. Okay, first step. For my size stone, I'm going to cut about 8 to 10 inches of the square copper wire. This is totally eyeballing it, so if your stone is bigger than mine, do a couple inches bigger. If it's smaller, do a couple inches smaller. It's better to have too much than not enough though. So I'm cutting 8 to 10 inches using my flush cutters, and we are going to start with making the bale. Since we are doing a wrapped bale technique, next we will cut 6 to 7 inches of our half round wire. So we're using these two wires to make our wrapped bale. We're going to start slightly off centered and we are going to use the half round wire to loop around the square wire one time. Make sure it's tight and then we're going to loop it around two times, pinching and tightening it as we go. Three times, four times, five times, and so on. So you're just going to keep wrapping it around until it's the length of bale that you want it to be. With this square copper wire, you need to be careful that it doesn't twist because it's really hard to get untwisted. So I'm almost finished wrapping it around to the length that I want. I'm just going to speed it up to the point that it's wrapped and we're ready to cut off the ends. Okay, this is the length bale that I want, which is a little less than an inch long. So I'm going to take my flush cutters and I'm going to cut off the extra wire here and we're going to tuck in the ends so that there's no sharp edges. You want to try to cut both ends on the same side of the square copper wire. That way you can tuck in um, both ends on the same side. So once you cut those off, you're going to take your pliers and just pinch the ends around so that they're not sticking out. And then make sure everything is nice and tight. Now we're going to grab our paintbrush to wrap the wire around to form our bale. I'm just taking my pliers here to pinch it close to make sure it stays nice and tight and everything is aligned and straight the way that I want it. I can be a little bit finicky about aligning everything correctly so the next minute or so I'm just going to speed this up and I'm basically just pinching and aligning the bale exactly how I want it to be. Okay, 
Okay, so the bale is done and it's time to grab our stone. So we're going to center our stone under the bale right where we want it. This part just takes a little bit of patience to get it right where we want it and centered correctly. So we're gonna begin wrapping it by bending the wire up and anchoring it around the bottom point. That's why it's useful to have a stone with a bottom point or is more irregular shaped to do this simple wrapping technique. So I'm just making sure everything is staying centered as I begin wrapping it. And one thing you wanna check is um, on the back of the stone, you might have some extra wire from when we were wrapping the bale. So you wanna make sure that doesn't get caught around the wrap. So use your pliers and bend it up and out of the way while we wrap the stone. And we will snip that off later, but just get it out of the way for now. I'm going to continue wrapping the wire around the stone while keeping everything centered. So you just need to have a good hand on everything. So take your time and make sure that nothing slips out of place, just like it did there. If that happens, just recenter everything before you keep wrapping. I'm just going to continue wrapping the wire around the stone, anchoring it around all of the points, and then we will finish off with wrapping the extra wire around the bale. So now we're back up to the top and we're going to have to figure out what we're doing with the two extra wire pieces. So we're going to grab the wire that we were just wrapping with and we are going to continue that wrap around the base of the bale. Again, you don't want to wrap the wire around that extra piece of wire from the bale on the back. So we're just pushing that out of the way again as we continue wrapping the wire around the bale. I'm just using my fingers and pliers to keep everything tight and the bale centered as I finish wrapping this wire around the base of the bale. So once it's pretty much all wrapped up, I can then grab my cutters and cut off the little end of it. And then I'll use my pliers to tuck it in. So now we can secure the wrap with this extra piece of wire we had hanging out there. So go ahead and wrap it around the other wire and then you will also cut it off so that it might end or you can cut it off so that it's ending at the back of the stone and then you can tuck that in as well. So if you find that any of the caged wire is loose around the stone, you can grab your pliers and bend it at the back of the stone to secure it a little bit tighter so that way your stone is not sliding around at all. And there you have it, a simple wrapped bale using a caged wire wrapping technique on a pyrite stone. Thank you.